To optimize your camera for taking a picture of a panorama, you can set the Pano Scene mode, or for more control over the camera functions, you can set the Manual mode instead, in which case, you'll want to make sure the flash is turned off, you'll want to set the Manual Focus, set the ISO, and as always, the white balance. Let's get started by setting the camera's Scene mode. Move the mode dial to SCN, right here, and then press the function button to access the function menu. Now you can use the control dial to move around the different scenes. What you want is one of the two panorama scenes at the very end. They're called stitch assist. One moves to the left and the other moves to the right, depending on which direction you want to take your pictures. I'll go ahead and choose this option, and then I'll go down to the white balance option. As with every picture, you need to set the proper white balance. Most likely this is outdoors, so I'll just go ahead and choose daylight for my white balance option. However, in your case, if the main light source is not daylight and it's, for example, tungsten, you should use tungsten instead. Choose the white balance that best matches your main light source. Go ahead and press set to escape. What this mode will do is lock the camera's exposure and other functions to the first image taken in the panorama. And for that reason, the first image is not necessarily the first image to the very far left or right of the panorama. For example, if you're taking a picture and the sun is going to be in the shot, you don't want the first image to be with the sun, and you also don't want it to be the farthest image away from the sun. You want the exposure to be somewhere in the middle, and the first image later on will pretty much just be thrown away. For this demonstration, though, I'll just start from over here on the left, take my first picture, Press the shutter button halfway to lock focus, and then take the shot. And you'll notice that half of my first image is placed over here on the left. Then all I need to do is match up the images, and then take the second image. You don't have to match them up exactly. This is more of a vertical matching. It doesn't necessarily have to be directly over, in this case, the subject's ear. I'll just go ahead and take the second picture. And you'll notice now that is placed over here on the left. And now I overlap that and so on. This will make sure that the images are properly overlapped so they're easily stitched in the software in your computer later on. Keep in mind that the camera will not do the stitching for you. If you feel like you didn't properly align the previous image and you want to retake it, you can just press the left or right navigation buttons depending on which direction your panorama is going. So in this case, I'll press the left navigation button and you can see that now I see picture number one here, and I can retake picture number two. If I feel like I did do a good enough job, I can press the right navigation button, as it indicates down here at the bottom of the screen, to go back, and now I can take picture number three, and picture number two is displayed over here on the left. Once you're done taking the series of pictures, you can press the set button to start a new series. The other option is setting the camera to the manual mode. Turn the mode dial to the letter M. The manual mode gives you full control over aperture and shutter speed. This will allow you to completely lock the camera's exposure so it doesn't change between the different images. The reason you might want to use the manual mode and not the panorama scene mode is, for example, if you want a vertical stitch, meaning start from the bottom and go to the top, or vice versa, or if you want to maximize the vertical resolution in your image, you'll actually turn the camera on its side and shoot vertically. This way you can shoot from left to right or from right to left while maximizing the vertical resolution of your final image. Again, when you're setting the exposure, make sure you're aiming the camera at something in between the brightest and darkest image in the scene. In this case, you can see that the image is considerably too bright. I need to change the shutter speed to be much faster. And as I'm changing it, I can see my meter change right here. Now because this is a landscape, I'll need to change my aperture. Currently it's on f1.8, which is too big. It won't get enough of the scene in focus. I'll change this to f8. Now I need to change my shutter speed because as you can see by the meter, the image is too dark. 0.4 seconds is much too slow for me to handhold, so in this case I'll need to use a tripod. In your case, however, if you're outdoors, you should really have plenty of light, and this will be much faster. As long as the meter indicates that the image is properly exposed, you should be just fine. 
Now make sure the flash is turned off. Press the flash down so it's not used by the camera. With panorama scenes, you don't want to use the flash with every shot because it'll create inconsistency in the lighting in each image, and it won't stitch very well later on. Now I also highly recommend setting the manual focus. Again, because you're taking multiple shots, the more you lock, the better the end result of the final image will be. So locking the focus to the same focal plane is a very good idea. An easy way of doing this is to first lock the autofocus on something in the distance. Again, I'm assuming this is a landscape, so place your focusing square over something in the distance. Press the shutter button halfway to lock focus. With the shutter button pressed halfway, press the MF or left navigation button right here. And what that will do is lock the manual focus to that distance. Then you can just press set to OK. Now the manual focus is locked at that distance and you can take all your shots and the focus will be the same throughout. Now let's go ahead and set the ISO. Press the up navigation or ISO button right here. Use the control dial to change this setting. Because it's a landscape, we really want to use a tripod and I recommend setting this to ISO 80. With pano shots, there shouldn't be any moving subjects in your image, so you can use an ISO 80 and put the camera on a tripod if the shutter speed is too slow. If you don't have a tripod and you need to use a faster shutter speed, you can increase the ISO. I'll go ahead and increase this to 400, then press set, and you'll see that now my meter is overexposed, so what I can do is change the shutter speed to compensate. So I'll speed this up until my meter is balanced, and now I'm at 1 of a second. This is still not quite fast enough to handhold, but it is significantly better than what I had before. Finally, let's go ahead and lock the white balance. You don't want to be using the auto white balance because it can shift between images. To set the white balance, press the function button to access the function menu, and use the up and down navigation buttons to find the white balance function. Then go ahead and use the control dial to move around and choose the white balance that best matches the main light source in your scene. In this case, again, we're assuming this is a landscape, so I'll just choose Daylight. Then press Set. Now everything is locked, and you're ready to take your picture. Frame the first image the way you like it in your panorama, either left, right, up, or down. Press the shutter button halfway to ready the camera, then the rest of the way to take the shot. Now obviously in this mode, you don't have the ability to easily align the following image. What I like to do is overlap about 50% of the image. What that means is try to remember what's at roughly the center line of your frame, and then just move that over to the edge. Then go ahead and take the second shot.